Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos. That's my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I would like to introduce you to two different hats, but they're actually the same pattern, pretty close. And one hat here is Daniel's hat and mine is right here. So the difference between Daniel and I were very unique in our way. Daniel prefers to wear a hat that does not do a fold or brim. I prefer one that does one. So this is the Mikey and David Dan hat collection in knit format. So what I like to do is that I like to get myself started using double points here in order to create this. And then once I get my first round done, I then transfer it over to circulars. And so then I can just keep on knitting in a complete circle and just keep on going and round and round. And then once I'm ready to close out the top, then I'll convert back into here. So, so I'm recommending a six millimeter, it's a US 10 knitting needle. This circular here is 16 inches long. And then here, these are also six millimeter US 10. So I'm going to show you how to cast on today, get yourself started in the pattern. And then the pattern is just the same stitches over and over and over. Daniel's hat will stop seven and a half inches before you start closing in the top. And mine is nine inches so that I can get the fold to happen for me. So that's something that you can decide for yourself. So without further ado, we're gonna get ourselves started. You should know that in this ball, you can get five of Daniel's hats out of this ball. Well, I'm thinking for myself, probably four, maybe four out of there, because we do have extra distance because my hat's gonna be taller to accommodate for the brim. As we begin this process, you should know that I'm doing these on the double points, but if you want to do the very first row here on a longer one, you can. Um, what we're going to do in the next row is that we're going to transfer this over to circular knitting needles, but I'm going to demonstrate how I did this because I like this method better, but you can decide what works for you. So we're going to get ourselves started with the double points. And so one will be used to help knit with and the other four will be used to stabilize and hold the yarn into position once we get moving around the first time. So it'll look just very much like this. Okay, just something like that when you're done. Okay, so let's begin by showing you a slip knot. So this is the second hut I ever did in my life. So this is, um, I'm going to teach it from that perspective. And I need you to create a slip knot. So with the end of the tail, I want you to wrap it around your finger twice. So just point your finger and wrap like this. Okay, so point and wrap. And using your other three fingers, just clamp down and hold it. This is called the slip knot. We have tutorials available just on stuff like this on its own. Once it's wrapped around your finger and your hand is closed, I want you to take the back one and go up over top of the first one and hold. I want you to take the new back one now, pick it up and go right over top of your finger. And that is your first slip knot where your first needle is gonna go, gonna go into. So let's show you one more time. So taking the tail end, run your finger twice, pinch, take the back over the front and take the new back one and up over top of your finger. If you have other ways of doing slip knots, by all means, just do it the way that you feel most comfortable. And I want you just to grab one of your double points don't, and just put it on and pull. Don't pull to the point where you can't move it. It should be nice and easy to go. And what we need to do is we need to cast on 70 stitches total. So grab another double point here and we're going to do a cast on. I like to do a twist and transfer. If you prefer another type of uh, um, cast on, please do that. And I'm just going to insert this one here into the same slip knot here on the back. Okay, so it's going to open up the, uh, the slip knot and it's on the back side and I want to position the yarn into my hands. The way that I like to do it is that I like to scoop it with my finger and as long as it comes over top of the, there, it's going to hold for me. Okay, so I like to scoop. and I'm gonna do a twist transfer method. So I'm gonna take this strand and go around the back needle and it's in between. And I wanna just bring that through by just lowering down and moving that here and push up. And this is another stitch you just made. And we're gonna put it onto this needle that I'm tapping. So we're gonna pull a little slack so it's easier and rotate so that this needle will catch the underside of that same loop and you're gonna transfer. This is a twist and transfer method. 
So now you have two stitches. So every time you get 17 stitches, we're gonna add a new knitting needle. But we need a total count of 70 stitches altogether. So to do another one, you put the, uh, the needle in, like this, if you're doing a knit stitch, you wrap and you go down, give it a bit of slack because it's easier. And then with this needle, scoop it underneath and place it on. And as soon as you're confident that it's on there, just take out this needle here. So going in, wrap, down, and transfer. So by going on the underside, you're causing a twist. That's why it's a, twi a twist and transfer. And you can get pretty speedy at this. So now there's five. So after you get 17 done, which I'll pick you up in just a moment, we're gonna introduce a, another knitting needle to our hands. So let's get 17 of these done on this needle and I'll be right back. So we now have 17 here on this one. So now we're gonna start and we're gonna create a new one. So a new uh, cast on, so you're gonna wrap and go through. And instead of putting it onto this knitting needle, you're going to just grab another one and come up underneath and put it onto that one and pull this needle out and tighten. So now we're gonna continue along on this knitting needle here. So you just gotta hold things stable as you can. And then you're gonna continue and you need another 17 on this one. Our goal is to get 70 all the way around. So it's a little awkward at first, but as soon as you keep adding more and more, they'll, you'll find that you can just hold one and the rest of it will just stay in place. And this one here, if you just move up so it's more equal in the center, it obviously uh, will, you won't have to worry about it sliding off either. Okay, so please add another 17 to this knitting needle and I'll be right back. So just gonna be 17 stitches total. So I now have another 17 on this one, so I'm just gonna move this more in the middle and we're gonna introduce another one. Okay, so let's start this one first. And instead of casting on to that existing one, you're just gonna insert next one underneath and go from there. And now continuing along, just kind of hold things together. I want you to place another 17 onto this needle. And as you've been probably noticing is that they're starting to hold together as soon as you do a few more. So it's just really awkward at first, but you just have to stick with it and you'll see things will work out. <laughs> Talk about awkward, right? So let's keep on moving. So I'm new to knitting, if you haven't noticed, so these kind of things feel foreign in my hands, but in time, I'm sure that it will get more and more comfortable. And so you just kind of work things out. So get 17 onto this needle and I'll be right back. So I'm now here, so I have 17, 17, and 17. So the very last one to get myself to 70 has to be 19. So I'm gonna grab one and I'm just gonna put it on. So we need to do 19 onto this one here, and then just grab your next one, come up underneath, and put 19 onto this knitting needle here. And so it'll cause it to look like a square. There, in a, I didn't really explain this to you. The reason why we're doing this is that the distance of this cast on is a short because it's a nice tight cast on. So it, it, does, it can't get around those circular knitting, uh, knitting needles the very first time. So that's, but it will after row number one, where it will relax. So the first time that we do it is that we have to get it on these double points in order to make that happen. So get your 19 onto this final needle and I'll be right back in a moment. So you're going to notice that this is relatively tight. So this kind of cast on is a very tight stitch, but you're going to notice in row number one, we're gonna get a lot looser. And because of that, we're gonna be able to get all the way around a circular knitting needle like this that's 16 inches. So to, in order to do that, we just wanna begin and we wanna start the process of working our way for all the way on all four and being able to put it onto our knitting needles here. 
So we're going to begin to knit this onto the circulars and then use the circulars until we get to the top of the hat for shaping. It's important that from jumping needle to needle that the bottom always stays down. So make sure that you don't have these twisting in any kind of weird way. And we're gonna start off with our very first stitch. So we're just gonna use one side of the circular and the first two are going to be a knit stitch. And you're going to notice that once you start pulling this stuff off, this stitch in row number one is gonna be a lot looser. Then you, so you do two knit stitches in a row, so it would be K2 in a pattern. And then we're gonna do two purl stitches in a row. In order to do a purl stitch, we need to get this yarn between the needles to the front side before you start it. And then you go into the top of the stitch, and I'll demonstrate this a few times, top of the stitch, on the front and you wrap it around that needle and you f go down and flick it towards the back and once it's confirmed onto this needle here you're going to slide up and off so you're going to want to keep moving things up this needle so the next one in row is also a front sorry is also a purl it's already on the front because you've already moved it in the last stitch so you just wrap and then go down and slide off Once you have that done, the next two are knit stitch. Move the yarn back, and the next two are a knit stitch. Keep letting these go down all the way through the wire, and you're gonna go all the way around in that same formation. So you're gonna do this a knit stitch, and the next one is a knit stitch. And then the next two are purls. So you're just gonna alternate between the two stitches every two stitches. So and the yarn's in front, wrap the needle in front, flick to the back, and then the next one is a purl. So I'm gonna hold for a second here just to show you. If you spread this out, whenever you saw the line that crosses in front like this, this is a purl. The ones that do not have that are a knit stitch. So you can see that there's two pearls we just finished. So if you get lost, you just have to look. So you've got two knit stitches because there's nothing crossing in the front and then two knit stitches and then you got your pearls. So the next uh, two are knit stitch. And then keep moving these up. And eventually we're gonna get rid of this needle as we get closer. So the next two are pearls. Okay, and keep spreading these down. So the next two are knit stitch. I loved making this hat. The colors of the roll with it melange just was excellent. So Daniel's color that you saw is the color theater. And mine that I am doing is called uh, Showtime. So it'll get easier and easier the more that you can release these needles and keep, again, moving this stuff down. So we just knit stitch. So I'm just gonna keep on going to you until this needle's gone. So on this needle, there's just one stitch left after this one. So you're gonna purl. The first one here and then just kind of move the needle out, put it aside, and then move to your next needle and continue to do the work. So the next one's a purl as well, and continue all the way around in that formation. So by the time you're done, you're gonna have this all shifted down and all of these needles here will be gone. And then in the next row, we're gonna be starting to use the other side of the circular and then going in a circle formation forever and ever. So if your stitch counts are right, the very final two are going to be a purl. Okay, so you're alternating between the two stitches. So you're just gonna purl the final two and you're going to release the last needle out. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to make sure that this here on the circular is been in a way that it just you can just follow it all the way around. Okay, so make sure it's not twisting 
in any kind of weird way. And I want you now just to shift and equally space out this so that this will get to the other side. And what we're going to do is that we're going to follow the stitch work then all the way around. So when we did this before, the very first two stitches, if you recall, are a knit stitch. So you're just going to immediately start and do two knit stitches in a row. So you're going to follow the pattern and in about five rows, you're going to be able to tell what the difference is like really clearly, but you're just going to knit the first two and shift. And as you just keep doing this, you just keep pushing it around and it will circle around your circular and come back without you having to turn anything. And then the next two are knit stitches. And you can tell by the stitch below what it is if you're paying attention. So let me just show you. If you recall, remember when I showed you what it looks like? So the next two are knit stitches, you see that? The next two, see those two lines there? That's a pearl. So the next two are a knit stitch. So moving that yarn back. And you see how it creates that, see? You can tell those are pearls, these are knit. So these are pearls, move them in front. So they're just in sets of two. And so you're going to notice is that, and I'll show you, and I'll stop in a second and show you. So you're gonna notice that where you started and stopped, you're gonna have a small gap here. So when you go to sew this in, you're gonna to wanna to just grab onto the very first starting chain here that you did at the far of the, the cast on and just kind of pull it shut with the tapestry needle. So all you're going to do now is just continually circle around this thing until you get to either seven and a half inches, which is Daniel's, or if you would like to do mine, nine inches. And that's where I'm gonna pick you up next. And so you just keep on going on. You can watch several movies. It takes a while to get up there. I found it very therapeutic. I made my hat during uh, Hurricane uh, Fiona. And uh, I just found myself, it was kind of just a stress relief in the middle of the stress of, of the aftermath of Hurricane Fiona. And so you just keep on pushing and eventually you keep, it keeps pushing and then it keeps on coming back around. So just keep making sure that you keep pulling stuff up so it's easy to pull off. And then you keep pushing down on this side to push it around so it naturally wants to circle back around for you. So when I pick you up in a few, mo uh, few moments from now, I'm going to pick you up on my sample here that is done. And this is up to nine inches tall. And so you just keep on going around. The stitches will match each other. And it's a really great idea. So you can see this is where I started. And so I can tell kind of where I started and stopped on this. So if you want to just follow it straight on up, then you can just end right there and then begin to do your top and make sure it's the distance that you want. So it's either seven or nine and a half or whatever size that you prefer. So before I show you how to close the top, in time you can see that the ones that are popping out towards you are the knit stitch and the other ones that are sunken are the pearl. So you just keep moving things around so you see the next two are pearl, make sure the yarn is in front. And I'm just using uh, just circulars here. And as I pull off, you know, I just keep pushing it down that needle so it will circle back around. Really a no-brainer, honestly. Um, I found in the very beginning I was having to think, oh, knit, 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 and then, you know, pearl, 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 whatever. And I found in time it just becomes a natural progression of my hands wanting to do it. And uh, so I, I can't take my eyes off my project yet. I haven't been knitting long enough to do it. Uh, but I found with myself, once you throw on the television or play some music, it gets a little bit easier because you're not concentrating too heavily. And again, as soon as this needle fills up a little bit, just keep pushing and it will circle back around. So my goal is to circle back around so that when I follow this edge, it'll be there. And that's where I'm going to start my um, closing in on the top. And the information to close the top is the same on both of our hats. The only difference is that my hat is going to be taller than Daniel's. So I'm now ready to close in the top. So I've come around here and I'm gonna leave this tail, I'll deal with it later. And I'm just following it straight on up and I wanna get approximately where I am so that my purling is going to be the first stuff to go. So my I have two, so what I wanna do is that in this one, I wanna reintroduce these knitting needles here. So instead of putting it on top of this one here, I wanna kinda of just push things and I wanna start knitting and about, every 
few stitches, I want to put it onto a new needle so that I'm back to the four. Okay, so you just have to equally space it. It really doesn't matter the number. So I want to just begin to purl the first two. So how you do that is just get it back up. So you're gonna pick up one and the other one. So it might be a little bit tight in the very beginning when you're starting this and you're picking up two stitches in a purl format. So I'm having a little bit of hard time. So I'm getting it closer to the edge here so that the needle uh, is not so thick. And then I'm pushing this one in and then I'm gonna purl the two together. So it's a purl two together to start. Kind of pull things nice and tight so it stays tight and then purl the two together. The next two, they're the knit stitch. So I'm gonna put the next two together. So just it's not, not just scoop one, scoop two. So I'm just shifting it up the needle a little bit further, higher. I'm using this finger to prevent it from popping off and I'm transferring onto this one here. So before I go to the knit, I'm going to just put the yarn in behind and I wanna get into here and you can push it up to this one so it gets thinner in thickness so it's easier to get that in and you're going to knit two together. You're going to purl the next two together. So you're going to knit, uh, so you're gonna purl two and then knit two, purl two and knit two all the way back around and then just eye it up and make sure that you're just equally spacing the amount of stitches onto these new needles again. And so you'll have the four needles back in play as you're continuing that around. Okay, so this will reduce it from um, a total of 70 stitches down to 35 by doing that. and then just keep on moving around. So I'll be back after I start jumping to another needle in just a moment. So I'm doing my last one here. So there's gonna be eight stitches onto this needle here. And then I wanna just let it rest, move it in, and then get a new one and then start. So remember the next one here happens to be a purl. So I wanna make sure that when I do this, that that is down in front. And I purl the next two together and then keep on moving around. So we're gonna to continue to go and collect these onto these knitting needles and continue around. So there's about eight on each and the last one will have just a couple extra because to get yourself to 35. But just keep on doing this and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming around and my last uh, stitch here should be purl, or sorry, knit two together. Okay, so we started off with the purl two together. The last one, if we're keeping it here. So we've just eliminated out half of our stitches and because we've done that the stretch to go around the circulars is not possible. So you're going to get rid of your circulars at this point and now we're going to continue and we're going to continue on all four of these. And so for the next two rounds we're going to um, start and we're going to do purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, and we'll do this for two rounds. And so let's begin to do that. So the first one you can see is already a purl. So we're just going to shift the first needle that we started with closer down. And so we get that yarn in front. And so you're going to notice this will be a lot more relaxed. And so we're going to purl one. And then knit one. So move the yarn back and knit one. And so if you're gonna do this round, this is round number two, and then you'll do it again for round number three. And use the base here to know if you've gone all the way around. If you want to, you can always put a stitch marker anytime you need to, but I use just kind of the base starting strand as to, to my indication when I've gone all the way around. Exactly what you have here, and this will carry that texture right to the top of the hat, and then I'll meet you on round number four in just a moment. So after we've done the last one here, we're gonna grab the next one here and we wanna transfer everything from the one needle to the other as we go. So you now have five needles in play to get yourself around. So you're gonna use the new one here. The first one out is gonna be purl one and then knit one, purl one and knit one. And you wanna do two rounds of this. And so you can use the base here to indicate when you come all the way back around or just keep a mental note of it, it's up to you. 
So if we know that the first one is a purl one, make sure the yarn is in front and a fresh needle, like so. And as you jump needles, make sure that it doesn't get too sloppy. So keep things in a nice tight tension. So the first one is a knit one, or sorry, a purl one, my apologies. And then you're just gonna slide off and you don't have very many stitches to do before this one needle's out of play. And then that needle becomes your new needle. So then you'll knit the next one and then you'll purl the next. So this round and the next round will be really easy. So this is round number two, and you'll do the same thing for round number three. So I'm just gonna take you to where you have to jump needles. So I find with myself when I work for the wood needles versus the steel or resin, I find my tension slightly different. So it's just something I keep, keep in mind that it may not be you that changes the tension, it could be the products that you're working with as well if you're jumping between the materials. So I'm gonna knit this last one and then this needle is free. So then this becomes your next needle that's gonna be up and you'll continue around. Let me shift this over. And if the last one was a knit, make sure that you bring the yarn forward first and begin your purl. Okay, and make sure that you kind of tighten things up after you get that first stitch in so that it doesn't look like you've jumped a needle. So just tighten things and then carry on for what you already know. So the next one has to be a knit. Okay, so please do rounds number two and three and maybe back here and we'll start round number four in just a moment. So I've now gone around twice, so rounds number two and three are done. Now round number four, we're gonna just change up the story a little bit and we'll get a fresh needle out. And we're going to start and um, basically knit every stitch. So we're no longer gonna be doing any kind of purling at this point. So with a fresh needle and just start immediately. So I stopped, you can see right here, so I can follow it up. So I know that I've come all the way around twice. And so I'm just gonna, knit then the entire round as normal and we're almost done this project okay and i know working with these four point uh, the double points is a pain um so you're going to preach to the choir if you want to complain about it um i there is probably a much better way but i'm such a new knitter that um i may be showing it harder than it needs to be but uh for now i'm just going to work through it i'm almost done so i'm just going to suck up the <laughs> what a pain it can be. So just uh, keep on knitting for one more round of this and it's knit every stitch and then I'll be back in just a moment. So the hole's even smaller and we have one more round which is the fifth and final round. We have an odd number, 35 stitches as you recall. So when you go to start the final round, the first one, there's only gonna be, you're only gonna knit one. So you'll knit the first one. everything nice and tight and then the remaining of this going all the way around will be a total of knit two together so just like we did before so you're going to just put two together and so um, that will then take you all the way around if you keep knitting two together for the remaining okay so please do that all the way around this is the very fi final round and I'll be right back in just a moment so I have to knit the next two together, but there's only one left on this knitting needle that was here. So what I'm gonna carefully do is that I'm just gonna shift it over so I can get this last one that was on there on, so then I can continue to put two together. So instead of trying to pick off from two needles at the same time, which is much harder, I'm just going to put that last one on there and continue to knit two together around so you can do that you can make up the rules as you go it's the yarn arts that's the whole point i'll be back in just a moment so I've now come all the way back around where the yarn tail is ending i want you to cut this to be longer and what we need to do is to do a, a cast off and the way that i'm going to do it is that i'm not going to do it with my knitting needles but i'm going to do it with the tapestry needle and i'm going to pull the remaining of these loops off so right where this is ending, this is your last stitch, you wanna start here and just with your tapestry needle with the yarn attached, it's just start picking them off. You can pick one or two off at a time and just 
go there and you can just pull a little bit of strand just to hold it a little bit and then continue to go. So as soon as you got it onto the strand, you can pull it off the needles. Okay, so you're gonna work all the way around doing this, releasing all of them off your, your needles as you go. Remember, take your time, it's not a race, and this will complete your idea. So you can add a pom-pom to the top of your hat if you wanted to. And at the end of this, once they're all on, we're going to pull it shut and this will close down the top of the hat to be, to be fully closed. So I'm coming back around with the tapestry needle, just grabbing everything I don't want to. It doesn't matter which direction you slide the needles out, by the way, just so you know, as long as you're holding on to those loops with the tapestry needle, just pull the strand through, get those out and you're good. So once they're all the way through, which it is, I want to pull the center just, just kind of pinch a little bit and continue to equally pull and this will pull down the center of your hat. The way that I like to secure the top is that I like to go directly across from where it pops out. Okay so the yarn strand will go over top and the first pull is important so make sure everything is there and then I go in a cross formation so I come in the side to the side. And I don't spend a lot of time on the outside of the hat, so I'll just pinch. Just go one more time across. And now I'm going to poke it down through the center of the hat. So using your hand on the inside of the hat, make sure that you do not um, stab yourself. Okay, and I'm going to turn this inside out. And I want to just secure it inside. So here on the inside, just within the strands, make sure you tie it itself into a knot. Okay, and once that's in, if you can just cut it short if you want to because it is in a knot, or you can weave it in a few stitches. Make sure you don't go all the way through the project so it doesn't pop out the other side. So going back and forth a total of three times, just stay within this layer. And once you have that done, you can safely cut it down. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial, is that the starting strand here, there's kind of like a gapping space that's created. So I want to just use that, and you can, can do that at any time now that I tell you at the end of the tutorial, but you can uh, cut the, or sorry, you can attach this and get rid of this tail. As long as you can tell the start and the stop of a round, um, you can also put a stitch marker there if you wanted to. Just kind of pull it together. And then I want you to favor the inside of the hat as, as the closing. So I'm just going to tie it in a little knot. And then on the inside here, just stay within the insides of the strands. Now when you're thinking about it is that um, I'm going to be turning up my brim. So when I go to fasten this off, I want to make sure I do a really good job. You may want to stay within the same colors. So you see how it's blue here. So instead of going down, you may just want to go across the same colorway so that it's kind of hidden within the colors. It's already in a knot itself, so it shouldn't pull out at all. And just a different path going back. And then finally, a third time is a charm. Okay, so there is my version of my hat um, in my length that I prefer, and I can just roll up my brim like so. The colors kind of started and stopped at a different spot here, but that doesn't bother me at all. You can always wear it around. And yeah, so you can add a pom-pom to the top. Pom-poms, when you add them, you can just uh, sew them to the top, or you can just put a strand through the pom-pom and bring it into the hat and then just tie it in a bow tie so you can remove it. If you're gonna do the craft shows, uh, people have the, like the option, but I really like how the brim here is a kind of a different shade, even though it's part of the same lineup and the yarn color comes back here. So whether you're doing my hat or you're gonna do Daniel's hat, it's a great option and uh, it's just a really cool idea and now I have something to wear and we can be, both be matchy-matchy. So until next time, we hope you have a good one and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.